Hey guys, so welcome and thanks for coming on today's webinar. So what we're going to be really covering today is mastering the numbers of a property deal. And, and so I want to not just, I'm going to use our, our two-year cash flow worksheet because it's one of the most comprehensive tools that I've seen on the market. And I think when you get used to it, there is a lot of numbers and a lot of tabs and it's worked out, you know, we've built it up over a lot of years. But the important thing here is, is that the sooner you get a grasp on this, the sooner you can not only use that for our deals, which is how we present all our deals, but also other deals, which is quite interesting because what I tend to find in the industry out there is we are focused on salesmanship and salesmanship means that we want to give you the least possible information um, to get the deal done yeah, in the quickest possible time. And that's that's inherent in the whole property market. You know, From when I was an estate agent, I got taught real estate 101, it was all about urgency. It was all about, you know, don't give them information they don't need. Just focus on the stuff they do need and nothing else. Um, however, that is at odds with how property should be done, okay? So one of the things you're gonna realize, and you'll start to see this in the level of depth of knowledge that we have, and the, and the detail we go into and the transparency we have you know, as a business is we have a lot of information that we present to you. Now, whether you use it or whether you see the top line, you'll see that we present top line or you can go into the detail, which I think is really important because if you're assessing a deal, you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours working through the fundamentals, which by the way is on a previous webinar or video. Um, what you really need to do is you need to have some headlines. And if those headlines don't tick boxes, then you throw the deal out because there's plenty more to come along. And you know, when I talk about the best deal in property comes along every day, if you don't take this one, there'll be another one tomorrow, better or just as good, if not better. Okay. So don't ever feel that you have to take a deal due to urgency. It's one of the tricks of the trade. It's one of the things that most companies do. And it's one of the things that I see, you know, we try and distance ourselves from that practice in the industry because for me, it doesn't serve anyone. It, it serves a business that is very short term in its thinking. And as we know now, you know it's too hard. It's too hard to do business short term. You want to bring your clients on board. You want to keep them on client on board and, and build a portfolio and get results for them. And I think for me, that's one of the keys in what we're doing here. Is you know we've got to really get that stuff. You know that relationship built so that we trust each other and so that you understand the system and the processes that we're going through and you'll hear that word a lot from me systems and processes because over the past 25 years what i've done is i've developed systems and processes for pretty much everything we do and then i train my team on how to do that so then they can replicate it over and over and over again and what it means for you is say in the case of dd invest which is the fundamentals of the deal Okay, it's the same all the time. So you learn it once and then it's all the same. You don't have to continually be relearning it, trying to find details. And it's the same with this cash flow. We've developed this over realistically, you know, this is I had this saying similar, well similar because it was in Australia. Um, you know, way back in the in the late nineties, um, when I first put this together. You know, sure it's evolved since then, it's become a bohemoth now, um, but the reality is it, the, you know, there's so much information here. So what I want to do is take you through this. So you see the level of detail that is here, and then you hold others to account on this level of detail, because this is the sort of detail that you should be going into. At the end of the day, think how much, and you know, if you look at these properties that we're looking at right now today, and this is an example development, it's a real development, but it's an example. Um, you know, 160 to 252 is the highest. So, you know, that's a lot of money to be investing. And even if you're only thinking, well, actually, I don't have to come up with that. The mortgage is going to be 70%. I only need 30% plus some costs on that. That's still a lot of money. For most people, that is a year's wage, a whole year's wage. Most people save their whole life to get one property like this. And yet, what I see continuously is people skipping over this sort of information, this detail, and going for the one pager that a sales rep, a sales consultant gives them, which basically says, here's the rent, here's the mortgage, here's the profit. And you go, oh, I'm so excited. And then you turn into one of these hopeful, I hope it works out, I hope he's telling the truth. And you know what? Rarely does it actually turn out that way. And I can tell you, if you set this up correctly, which we'll set it up to be generic, but you can add your own little bits and pieces to it, all right, as you'll see as we go through all the yellow boxes, the your plan as we call it, you can set it up 
so that I'll pretty much you know tell you that in two years time what will what you set up then will come to pass because everything's included in there now sure there's some instances where for instance you know something might go wrong the tenant might stop paying they may damage the place and there's those sort of extreme cases you know now can we allow for those in here absolutely we can you know but for the most part you know that happens so rare in the extreme you know that we only need to allow for certain things okay so uh, let's get into it and i just want to take you through so you can see the numbers um, and you know i mean take some time on this because what i really want you to do to get out of this is to see the level of depth that we go into here and then hold others to account that you're speaking to and see if they actually go into the same depth because i can guarantee you they don't because it doesn't make the numbers look flattering but it does make the numbers real and i think this is one of the keys you know do you want numbers that look flattering that say look it gives cash flow positive you're going to be earning 300 pounds a month and then you find out that actually you're having to subsidize at 100 pounds a month because that is the reality for a large part of the market out there. And certainly when you jump into spruikers and seminar junkies and all that sort of stuff, and you know, your mentors and trainers, a lot of them aren't, you know, aren't as detailed as this, all right? So you need to be as detailed. And I hope I dri have driven that at that point home because it is where you will come unstuck. So many deals, I've scuppered so many deals because the numbers don't stack up, all right? And I want you to have the ability to do that. And this is what I talk about, you know, building you to a numbers investor, which is about understanding these numbers and being able to read these numbers and then be able to apply it to a deal. But not necessarily having to go every single deal you look at into this much depth, okay? Remember, these are the deals that we present. It's the other, you know, 10, 15, 20 deals that we get that we reject that didn't pass these numbers. Okay, but you'll see that the headlines and actually when we get in more detail about the process we use and you know what we accept and what we don't accept and how we negate things out at various stages, you know, you'll start to get a sense for the process and the detail that we go through. All right, guys, so let's jump into it now. So what we see here is the first tab. And this basically, this first tab, okay, is the what's it called, the plots tab. Okay, so plots tab, and the plots tab quite simply just has a list of all the plots that are available for sale. So if we have a look here, we can see over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. that's just numbers, but these are the actual plot numbers, all right? The floors, the beds, the baths, the square foots, square meters, parking, asking price. Now with parking, it says no there, that's because no is not included, but parking, you may be able to add it on as an extra, okay? So that's something else, but, but right now, this is not doesn't include parking. Um, and you find this in a lot of the city centers now that they're, you know, develop, large developments are only getting a very small um, percentage of parking because most people are using the transport. Um, you know, but so you've got your price. Now what the, it has the ability to do too is not only work on GDP or pounds, but you can choose whichever currency you want, okay? So if we go over here and I'll just introduce this to the currency tab, you can pick any number of currencies, including Bitcoin is even in there, believe it or not. Um, so you can compare it, pounds versus Bitcoins, or pounds versus Albanian leek, uh, lek, I think it is, uh, Argentine peso, you know, <laughs> Armenian dram, whatever it is, okay? All the currencies are there, and then obviously this is back from 2017 when we first sold this development, so this hasn't been updated, um, but it is there. So you get your price, and you can see in your price in your currency, all right? Then you got discount, now in this case it was 7% below the asking price. Don't put too much credence in that, because what happens in a lot of these developments and a lot of cases is, you know, that's the negotiation. So the first price is the asking price, as it says there, you know, asking price, and then the discount is 7% off your to the price you're paying, okay? So that's how you read that. That's what they're actually advertising at, you know, and this is the prices from, this is the, the initial price list, and then we negotiate off there. You've then got the price per square foot, the res, uh, res, reservation fee, if there is one, progression fees, 
which is to progress the property, organize a mortgage, all that sort of stuff, um, you know, the, uh, for the, the sales progression side of things. Um, that may or may not be there, so there's some various charges. You've got snagging if you want to do snagging um, upon completion and, you know, have a reinspection so you can add that in there. Obviously, it's not standard depending on who you, who the developer is. We can decide, you know what, I think we want to check this developer, check his work, you know, so we'll send a snagging person in. We've got window dressings. We've got, um, let's move it across. So you've got ground rent, service charge, washer, dryer, fridge, freeze. You've got flooring, um, combined power, heat, um, combined, combined heat and power, sorry. Uh, bathroom accessories, value as rent and realistic market rent, okay? So I think these are important to understand. Value as rent and realistic market rent. There's another video done on this, but I'll, I'll just briefly over it. The value is gonna go in and they normally value or value the rent higher than what the realistic market rent is. The other side of it is, is we wanna get this thing let. So if there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 of them coming at the market in any one week, we wanna make sure we position ours so ours is let first, okay? And we do that by being prepared, we do that by picking up the keys as soon as we possibly can, we do that by dressing the property up, we do that by a number of different things. But the, so the rent, in this case, it's, it's 50 bucks less than what the value of rent. The value as rent is used to calculate the mortgage. The realistic market rent is what you're actually going to receive, okay? And I won't deal in here, but basically that's what that is. And then we've got the description, um, expected exchange date, stage payments, expected completion date, um, and total stage payments. So in this case, it's 25% it's is on exchange and that's it. There's no, sometimes there's 5%, 5%, and that sort of thing. So that is just the summary, all right? So this is used, and what we use this for is to choose a plot. So we can say, well, actually, do you want a one bedroom or two bedroom? Do you want a high floor or a low floor? Do you want, you know, whatever? And then you can get the floor plans out and have a look. Once you've chosen a plot or once you sit there, and this is all about taking, you know, if you think back to the DD Invest, hopefully you've seen that video. We start off with a story, we go into the fundamentals, we go into the development, so the area fundamentals, the development, and now we're going down to plots. Yeah, with an S on the end, and we choose a plot. Once we've chosen a plot, then we either go over to this one, which is a UK client workshop, uh, worksheet, I should say, which is all the numbers in GDP, but what I'm gonna show you is the international one, in case you're internationally, because it has, in this case, I've chosen Singapore dollars, it's got GDP and Singapore dollars. So it is exactly the same, um, and in fact, I'll use this, I'll show you this start, because it's a bit simpler this side, and then we'll go over to the international one to show you the cash flow, all right? So in this case, it's eight floor, one bedroom, one bath, blah, blah, blah. The price is that, you're not including parking, but you'll see down here, you can choose all the different plots that are available, okay? You can choose to have, I don't know if parking's in, yeah, so you can buy parking for 10 grand. So that's where you add that, all right? And if we wanted to, if there's a special negotiation with the developer, and you've done that, you can drop the price, you know, whatever. So these yellow boxes all the way through enable you to customize your cash flow, all right? And that's key, you know. Solicitor's fees, you might say, I wanna use my solicitor because they're only gonna charge me 750 bucks, done. You know, 25% um, there, um, that's a stage payment. And then if we keep going down, um, we've got, you know, various things here. So let's say the stage payment, there's no, um, no, we're not flipping, that's legal costs and rent valuation, if you are flipping. But in this case, it's not got a stage payment, but let's do a 25%, let's say do a 10%. So 10% um, stage payment, and then, uh, oh sorry, so we've done 25 there, yeah, um, which we can change, so let's say that's 15. So we've done a 15%, a 10%, and then 75% is the mortgage advance. And obviously you can change that to whatever you want. You know, if you're buying your own home and you're 85%, then obviously that will change all that. But then what it does, it works out automatically what the RICS valuation is, the mortgage broker fee, the solicitor's fees, all the fees and that. So whatever that figure is there is what you actually need to complete the property, the total amount. So to buy 177 property, in this case, you need 36,000 pounds, okay? Um, which is about you know where we sort of sit with most stuff. We say minimum is about thirty-five thousand pounds. Now, to be fair, you're probably not going to get an eighty-five percent um, mortgage. You're probably more likely 70, 75 percent, somewhere like that. So, in which case, sixty-two would be for one hundred seventy-seven k property. All right. Then what we have over here. So this is about to buy the property. 
But now you own the property. So are you going to get it snagged? Yep, I'm going to get a snagging company in for 350. Window dressing is going to spend 500 bucks. I'm going to buy a fridge freezer, or sorry, a washer dryer. Um, that I'm going to put flooring in. I'm going to put really good quality flooring. Um, combined power and heat. Don't need to worry about that. Bathroom accessories. Yeah, I'm going to put 110 in there. It's already there as 110. But if I put 120, it'll change to 120. And I'm going to leave it um, unfurnished to start off with. Or maybe what I want to do is I want to put quality stuff in. So I'm going to say 1700, whatever it is. Okay. Um, you know, high end quality might be you know that much. So you know you can put that in. Now obviously you can change those. But the other side, so this is to get the property ready to let. Then you've got provisions. So number of tenancies. So basically one tenancy in two years, okay, which would mean you have a 24 month tenancy. Our average ranges, depending on when the market is, between about 18 months and two years for the most part. But we've got tenancies that have been there for like 12 years, you know, so um, that's really important. So you, you can put that. You can also put how many void periods. So let's say now I think it's only four weeks, not six weeks done. And I think the tenant fine fee, I can get it for, you know, let's say it's 7%, which is way too much. But anyway, that's fine. Inventory I need to get done and it's 125. So now that is, that plus that plus that is what this is going to buy and hold or, or to get ready to let for the first two years. Now, it doesn't include cash flow. So let's go over to the international one for the cash flow. So this is, if you have a look on the international one, that's still the same details there. But what we've got now is we've got now this Singapore dollars thing, all right? Now I can say, well, actually my agent's fee isn't gonna be 6%, it's gonna be 10%. And I've got a rent guarantee option, I can put that in there, but or I think my rent actually is gonna be 925, not 900. A 950. Um, the arrangement fee of my mortgage is going to be that. The term actually I've got 35 years, um, and my mortgage was actually 4.75. Now putting the thing up, obviously, um, I'm going to try and get it negative. Let's let's do the interest rate to a ridiculous amount, 6.75. Yep, good. All right. So we've done that now. Now what you've got is all these figures here. So if I'm just working in GBP, then I can do that. Look at this, and I can see that my net rent received is going to be that after my agents' fees. My mortgage is there, so these are my mortgage interest only payments. This is my repayment mortgage, okay? So the rent less that gives me a monthly cash flow of these figures, all right? But then you have the annual charges, because then you've got service charges, ground rent. Now again, you can adjust all these if you need to. A lot of times you don't need to. A lot of times we've already put the details in there, so you don't need to change them, all right? So they can be left there, all right? So they're there, and what that means now is this yearly cash flow, this is, this is monthly, yeah? This is yearly cash flow, profit, loss, whatever. On an interest-only basis, yeah, would be monthly eight bucks plus. Yearly um, would be 93 bucks you'd make. So 100 bucks over a year isn't a lot, okay? Um, and this is based on the, the void period we said, all the details, parameters we put in there. And then what we've got is, this is based on repayment. So repayment, you would be subsidizing this property um, 61%, uh, $61 a month or 700 a year. Yeah, so you would have to know you could afford this. But remember, this is a 6.75 interest rate. If we put it what is more like, let's say 3.5, well now you're getting some cash flow there. Yeah, even on a repayment basis, you're making 2,000 a year based on all those figures. All right, 10%, you know, blah, 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 all this sort of stuff, all right? And then, so if you look at the two years, this is yearly, but if you look over two years, these are the figures. Yeah, that you would get either in sing dollars or in pounds. Yeah. So as you can see, there's a lot of flexibility there. There's a lot of ability to be able to change stuff. And then I'll just move across here and I'll bring it across. So this is, that's all the detail you put in. Then you put the summary. So the rental yield on purchase price is 6.75. The cash and cash return is 7.85. Capital growth. Now you can say, well, actually, I think the capital growth is going to be 3%. It'll work it out 3%. Um, and this is percentage one year or five years. So over five years, I think it's going to be 8% a year. So that's capital. So that's a total return on yield and capital will be 17 point da da da. And then, yeah, effectively remortgage after um, first year, 75 to 75%, all right? Which would be, you'd be able to pull 12,000 out, assuming affordability, all right? Um, so acquisition cost was 52. Um, total cost of property, um, everything would be 173, 
okay? So that's pretty much it. Now, if you look at the summary, the initial investment is 50, okay, pounds, I'm talking pounds here, 50,000 pounds. Then you need to put aside two and a half grand to cover your costs for the next two years, void periods, things like that. And then, but then you're getting back your cash flow of 4,600 over two years. So you wouldn't necessarily have to put aside that 2,400, but all up over two years, it's gonna cost you 47,000 or 85,000 sing dollars, all right? Now, if I wanted to, I can change that to, wait there, where am I? I can change that from sing dollar to, let's say, um, have we got European, Euro, let's do Euro there, all right? Um, and that will change all those figures now, because if you look, we've got Euro, and they'll all be Euro figures, yeah? So that, it's as simple as that. And then what we have here is just summary. Money needed after, you know, so, so once you reserve seven days, 30 days, X period, which is the stage payment, total on completion, so total acquisition costs this. Then you've got these, 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 and you can read through all these, but you'll see that it's very clear on what you need to do. It looks like a lot of numbers, but what we do is if you will just want to look at the summary, then just come here, ignore all that. If you want to customize it, sure, customize it and come here. Yeah, so that's those two. But then we can play even more games because then you say, right, I've got that now. Now let's have a look at the growth potential. So I'm going to say, right, I bought that, I reserved that in um, June 17. Completion was October 18. So year of completion is 18. So from June 17, my capital value is there. So the valuation was 177. If it grows 3% per year, yeah, 3%, 3%, 3%. And I can change that. I can say, well, actually, I only think it's going to be 2% or I think it's gonna be 8%, whatever I can put in there. It shows me every year, effectively, for the next however many years, up to 36, yeah? Um, so bottom line is, you know, you can change those. But what you can also do, and this is in, obviously, GBP and Euros, because obviously, if you're talking Euros. Now, if we move over here, this is also factors in inflation. So that was just looking at capital values based on what those figures were. But now if we said 3% inflation, 5%, 5%, 5%, there's negative inflation there, you know, it will work out all these figures, all right? And that basically is how you work it out. And then you can look at, you know, your interest only mortgage, your repayment mortgage, so you can see that actually by 2036, I'm only gonna owe 41,000. At the end of that, I only owe 35,000, yeah? So there's a whole range of stuff you can do there. What you can also do is look at the mortgage now, Obviously, that's quite a full on. But with the mortgage, the mortgage, the starting mortgage is that, which it's also, actually it's in sing dollars, this one, but I can change that. Um, so look, bottom line is here, is you've got November 2008, I'm increasing um, interest rates by 0.25. So it'll go from 3.5 um, to 3.75. Um, so basically that will then go boom, boom, boom. Oh, now wait there, I need to, ah, uh, sorry guys. Um, it'll have the starting balance there, but I've realized I've still got the lock on, so I'm not gonna change it now, but anyway. So bottom line is you can see what it is each month all the way through to whatever it is, 36, 37, 43, you know, at which point, what do we owe here, 43,000? Yeah, I think it is that we owe. So we're left with 43,000 in 43, yeah on a repayment basis. Obviously, interest only will owe the same amount, yeah? So you can actually change these figures and you put whatever you want in there. If you think there's gonna be an 8% increase in interest rates, then you can put 8% there, yeah? So, um, you know, so it'll work all that out very easily for you, okay? So, and then we've got the UK tax property calculator, which basically what this means is, you know, if you put in these figures, it will work out what the transitional rule is. Now, to be fair, there is no transitional rules now. This was done in 2007 um, as the things were step-by-step -step increasing. Now, what we actually have is that, um, you know, these are all in. So the new rules are in full force. That so would be this figure here, all right? So in this case, with all this thing, annual rent of 100,000 and allowable, blah, 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 they're gonna be 4,600 pounds off, you know, um, less. You know, um, but yeah, you can have a look at that. I won't go into a lot of detail about this, but um, the best to speak to your accountant about that. Um, if you want to, you can look at your stamp duty. If you want to see, well, actually, what if I bought a three hundred fifty thousand property? You know, it's eighteen k. If I bought a five hundred fifty thousand, five hundred fifty five thousand property, it'd be that. You know, so you can work that out. You can also download the stamp duty calculator, which uh, is effectively downloading this one here. So you can work out what the impact is 
on your portfolio, okay? Now, that's great, we've done the currency. What I wanna show you finally is the portfolio side. So this is a really cool thing if you just wanna have a look at how this purchase, if you're gonna buy the property we've been talking about, is going to impact your existing portfolio. So you can put in all this detail. I'm not gonna go in here now and do this now, okay? This is something you wanna sit down with your portfolio manager in and they can explain to you in detail and go through the pros and cons and what the details is and all that sort of stuff, all right? The bottom line is we can have up to 20 properties. You can choose whatever currency they're in, okay? Um, and then you can record the details, all right? So it's a great way to record the details. It all goes in there. It's got your current valuation, your current mortgage, your quantum, you know, your possible equity remortgage, your monthly rent received, agents fees, net rent received, buy annual, buy annual expenses, allowances, all that sort of stuff. Um, we use a thing called mortgage cost averaging, okay, MCA, which is that 6%, which is what I, I average things. So whatever the interest rates are now, I don't worry about that. I do things at 6%. So we can look at what the real interest rates are, the actual pay rate, but we can look at the mortgage cost averaging, which is another concept that I teach, okay? And um, that means that even though you might be less than that, you're accounting for the fact that the market will go up and down over a period. Because remember, this is portfolio management. It's not about what's happening now, it's about what's happening over the entire ownership. And can you hold it at the best times and the worst times, okay? Because that is by definition being a portfolio manager, okay? Um, so there's a whole heap of things there. You can look at mortgage tie downs, there's space for notes. But then once you enter all this detail in, then you can go down here and what this allows you to do, okay, is summarize your portfolio. So you look at total assets, total liabilities, total net worth, total potential remortgage, your quantum, you can look at your income, less costs, less mortgages under either interest only, repayment, mortgage cost averaging, you know, is that 6% or 6% to your cash flow. And then you can look and say, well, actually, how much cash have I got on hand? I've got 50,000 on hand. Okay, great. I haven't put any details in. I probably should have actually, but um, I can also look and see, well, what if I bought this property? and it cost me 50,000, whatever it was, you know, how does that affect various things, okay? And so you can summarize and have a look at how this will fit into your portfolio. But I recommend you using this, you use it with a portfolio manager, sit down with them, go through the details, or charge up on a, uh, a meeting, a video meeting, and they can take you through and fill out the details. So you've got a really good sense for where things are. And I think it's really essential this document, you know, it gives you so much value. And the great thing is, you know, this is how we present everything. So once you learn how to use this, yeah, fantastic, it's done. You know, you don't need to keep learning it. It's there, you know, it's there. And it's, you know, the same format and it has been the same format for, I don't know how many years, I can't remember. I mean, it was probably 2005, 2006 maybe when I, I first brought this into the UK and we started using it in this format. In fact, it was even before that. It was because, in fact, it was 2004 when I started using this in the UK. So, you know, right now this is, you know, it's getting its 16th anniversary. Um, and it, apart from adding a number of things to it, in essence, it hasn't changed. Why? Because it works. Yeah. It gives you the details you want. And I can be honest with you, you know, if you're not going into this level of detail with a property you're buying and looking at how it impacts your existing portfolio, yeah, then you're leaving yourself exposed. And the unfortunate thing is the industry and the spruikers and the gurus or, you know, fake gurus out there, they will try and blindside you, you know, even at property exhibitions, you know, they'll give you this crappy little thing, you know, you should never look at that because basically it's probably full of crap, you know, it doesn't give you a, the right picture. What they're trying to do is sell you on half the story in order to do property properly. You need to know the rules of the game. You need to have a plan, a strategy, work that plan or strategy, know the rules of the game, understand the market, where it's at and where it's going. But most importantly, you need to know what the fundamentals are for the area, which is the DD invest aspect of what we do, and the numbers, which is the two year cash flow worksheet, which is what we're looking at here. You know, you get those things underway and you get those things squared away. It is amazing how much certainty and confidence you can go with, yeah? And look, any questions you've got about this, speak to the guys, yeah? Speak to the team, because you know what? They can answer this. They deal with this day in, day out with all sorts of customers from all around the world, you know? So it doesn't matter. This is not a UK thing. This covers pretty much, as we've seen, any currency, including Bitcoin, all right? 
if you're young and uh, you know you're storing up your bitcoins because you can work it out from a bitcoin basis but anyway the bottom line is with this get more detail get into the numbers and become a numbers investor because when you become a numbers investor that's when the certainty starts to come yeah and that's when you can filter deals out quicker you know with more accuracy and you don't fall for the slippery sales tricks that unfortunately so much of this industry has you know and is typified by all right so guys any questions you've got webinars um, at thing or you know I'll take questions now um, uh, sorry webinars at gladfish.com or I'm happy to take questions now and we can uh, yeah, get them answered so yeah go for it I'll leave this open and uh, yeah let's uh, chat through all right guys thanks